Good morning. Joining me for a coffee? Good. And thank you very much. It's been a bit cloudy and you've brought some sunshine. So nice to see you again. So just before I start, let's give you an update on my golf swing. Ah, oh, yeah, right. Okay. Aiming a bit to the right there. Got plenty of space. Already done my exercises. Hmm, feels good. How's it looking? All right, on the right track. One more, might even put this one in slow motion, you never know. Okay, so let's put that away for a moment. Let's have a look at the order of the day. A little bit windy, new hat, could blow off. Never mind, let's uh, go to see if we can keep this under control because it's windy and my papers could go everywhere. So, first of all, a big thanks to you all. 65,000 hits on this series of video chats. So uh, a lot of very positive comments, 1,153 comments, um, and likes of average 97%. Can't be bad really, can it? Thank you very much. Now, I've got a question. Uh, I've got various things to get through here. It's a little bit of a, a, a mix of things today. Um, so uh, a question from Greg Ramsey in Australia. I think we've already heard from Greg once or twice. So. Um, he's saying that he's struggling to feel the club head on the golf course because um, Australia they've been playing golf for, I'm not even sure they haven't been able to play golf all the way through um, and with his swing caddy at home he feels the club head all the time in the garden gets out on the golf course gets to the back swing okay that's all a bit of a blur so why is that what's what's going on here well Problem number one for we golfers, particularly in the modern world, particularly, although even some of the old people like Wild Bill and Hellhorn, who I'll talk about later, was talking about this in the day. We're thinking too much about the golf swing. So if you're out there trying to play golf and you're trying to get some feel of the club head, and at the same time you've got all of this stuff saying, now how's my grip, how's my alignment, how's my posture, how's this, <sighs> micromanaging every little part of your body throughout the swing, your capacity for feeling is taken up by thought and a multitude of thoughts but even when you get rid of those there's still an issue with feel so um, today um, for example our senses uh, I was doing my exercises and uh, various exercises I, I usually got my music on and I'm listening to the music and especially some of my exercises are very calming stretches and I'm doing a certain number of repetitions and, and the ones where I do repetition I don't hear the music quite so well and if a nice piece of music that I particularly like has come up I'm a bit frustrated that I'm counting and not listening to the music so again my attention how can I how much concentration can I have at any one time and I would suggest that if you had pain in two parts of your body you would feel the pain that was the most severe. If you had one pain first of a mild nature and you'd be complaining blah, 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 and then you get another bigger pain well that other one would disappear you wouldn't even be able to feel it anymore. Try and feel two different parts of your body at exactly the same time and I think you'll find that sensations are fluctuating between the two and obviously they will go more towards the one that's feeling more painful. So what can we do about that? Well, we're on the right track with the easier swing because we're decluttering. 
getting down to just some simple basics which for our own golf swing which we must turn into feel and then so we would come back to for example in the garden with or in her in the home or on your balcony with the with your swing trainer my holding one here I'm, I'm waggling all of this why do, why do some golfers do this I think they're feeling the club head and just establishing exactly where it is and it's got to move but I can still feel it and if I know if I feel where it is I can do what I want with it I've got a chance of controlling it if I can't feel it no chance so then I might just close my eyes can I feel it can I feel it from start to finish can I feel it here can I feel it all the way through I didn't hear it so I didn't click it so can I feel it yes so it's an exercise it's a drill then when you go to play I would suggest if you're practicing how about hitting some little shots to start off with with your eyes closed just hitting little shots can I feel the club head? Not worrying about the shot, it doesn't matter. Can I just get better and better at feeling that club head? And I'm sure with some focus on that, you can. And then if we go to SFT, see it, feel it, trust it, so that when you're actually playing your shots, stand behind the ball, see the club head hit the ball, see the ball take off, fly, come down, land, roll, stop. Now, can I feel what it would be like to create that? walk up and do it. trust it and do it and the more you get absorbed into that the, be the more you do it the better you get at it and you start to see things in greater detail and of course then your mind is occupied with that as opposed to internally thinking about how to micromanage your golf swing and your body okay so um, I'm sure that Greg you'll be making lots of progress but you've got to stay focused on that point Right, a little check on the on the program. Uh, ah, Wild Bill. Now, the last three weeks <coughs> since I saw you last, I've been I've been working on my book, but I haven't been writing a lot, other than taking a lot of notes because I've been reading several books that I wanted to read because I just know there's some gems in there um, that will help me in my book and I'm always very happy to quote other people because uh, some very important discoveries and knowledge actually comes from the wider community so um, Wild Bill oh, unbelievable uh, this book was written in the 1980s um, just shortly before he died uh, it was a Bobby Shave his great uh, supporter and advocate and um, he uh, asked questions and Bill answered and that was the format of the book so much it's a bit like reading the easiest swing muscles and joints should be at ease in their performance simple statement uh, he had a version of La Danse de Golf he had the, the, the shaft on his thighs and he did this it was La Danse de Golf and many many years or probably before I was even born if I'm really honest he was a great golfer in the 1920s in particular throughout his career but particularly the 1920s he was one of the uh, he was a member of the first American Ryder Cup team so he was up there with the Bobby Joneses with the, uh, all the people that we've heard of from that period and his um, his uh, his hero was Harry Varden who apparently also had this very very languid very relaxed swing and also believed in exactly the same things tensions a killer you should be as loose as possible um, and uh, he had a uh, he talks about this in the book he said that Harry Varden told him to play at two-thirds power and he could go up to three quarters but only on the last two holes if he needed to because he, he needed maybe to hit some longer shots to score in the last couple of holes because then it wouldn't damage him for very long if you do it early in a round and you start losing it so he knew that the harder you hit it you get to a point where you start to lose it so he played at two-thirds not even the 80 percent that we would like Tiger to play at so um, and then the other thing Harry Varden told him was that before playing he should hit six shots with fingers and thumbs 
not a proper grip just fingers and thumb and when you do that and obviously I'm not putting in, in enough um, speed here to get it to click but you can't be tense and you can't rush it you have to go with the speed of the, of the club itself and let's just see whether I could actually get it to click okay, and you can see that it's a bit like playing the flute okay so um, you will be seeing sorry I'm gonna lose my hat you will be seeing quite a lot of Wild Bill and his book was Golf Secrets Exposed unavailable unfortunately but uh, thank you to Rupert Cotton you'll see quite a few of comments uh, of his in, in the videos uh, and he sent me a copy and it's just been absolutely wonderful so um, right um, now um, another book that I was reading last week was Golf in the Kingdom which I'd read many years ago and I thought oh, I'd better go back and have another look at that and really it's getting quite windy now um, so um, uh, yes I went on from reading his book because the main character in the book is is Shiva's Irons and there's now a Shiva Science Golf Society in America and um, so I went on to look at the website and I came across a video and there was a guy and he told this story and uh, um, it's a story that I think for us has um, has a relationship to how often we are taught in the wrong way and how teachers tend to get, want to somehow they've got the method and we have to fit ourselves to it and this is a story of a, a man who's not particularly well off man lived in a village um, but things started going well for him and suddenly he found he had a, quite a lot of money coming in and and he thought well, I've always wanted a brand new suit tailor-made suit so he thought right okay I've got the money now so gets on the bus goes into the large town and he goes to Zobak, the best tailor in the whole region. And he goes in, he gets fitted for the suit, and he comes back a week later to pick it up, puts it on. Oh, quality, absolutely fantastic. Oh, there's one sleeve that's two inches longer than the other. So he said, well, to be perfectly honest, for the, the price I'm paying for this, I don't expect the sleeves to be different lengths and uh, Zorbat got a bit indignant and there's nothing wrong with this suit he said but it's the way you stand so he pushed one shoulder down it oh yeah okay arms are both the same length right. he said but you know, now it's all sort of hunched up behind my neck here and he said and if I go home and my wife sees that she'll, she'll play hell with me so he said well, nothing wrong he said it's your posture so he pushed his head down so now he's got his shoulder down his head down he says look perfect fit okay so keeps the suit on gets on the bus to go home and he's sitting there and then the bus stops and a guy gets on sits opposite him. and after a while the guy had been looking at it and the guy said um, is that a new suit he said yes he said um, my lovely suit he said uh, that's Zobak isn't it the tailor he said yeah how did you know he said, well, only Zobak is good enough to give you a suit that, that can fit your twisted body. <sighs> Be careful, they will twist you in all shapes to fit yourself, to, to fit you to their method. Everybody's got a method and it's a bit like a fingerprint. So, um, we've got a couple of things um, to read out. Firstly, um, I've got a, an email that came through to Julian the other day and it's from Rex and um, Julian said it, it's, a, it's a complaint of sorts I've been taking advantage of the lockdown in the US to practice the easiest swing in my backyard with plastic golf balls since the balls are not real golf balls, there is no pressure to perform. However, they do reveal pushes, pulls, hooks, slices, fat hits and all the other typical sins. I've always had a very short backswing and a rush downswing, which of course goes together. 
So in the backyard, I've been trying to channel my inner Julian Mella. Your swing is so lovely and smooth, a perfect model. I played actual golf for the fifth time today and things seemed to click. My backswing and turn were more complete, if not yet Mella-like. I was making excellent contact and felt as if I were taking nothing but practice swings. Here's my complaint. I normally hit my 9-iron 130 yards, but today I missed at least three greens because the ball ended up on the back fringe. One of these 9-irons went over 150. This is yards. How could this happen? I'm just making a nice turn and focusing on a smooth and balanced finish. On a couple of shots, calling for 130 yards, I used a pitching wedge, normally a 115 club, pin high both times. Now for my major complaint. Hole number 17. Playing 165 slightly downhill par 3. I often end up in the left trap <coughs> badly short-sided. <coughs> badly short-sided. Beyond the hole is treacherously downhill, so I decided to lay up short and hope to chip close for a par. Normally a downhill 165 yard would be a perfect 6 iron for me, so I pulled the 7 out. A nice strike, right on line, but wait, it flew the green and ended up 185 yards from the tee. A flush 7 is normally right on 150 for me. How did this happen? So the bottom line, I'm blaming you for my shooting 82 instead of breaking 80, which would have been a, a cinch if my distances weren't off by at least a full club. It's hard to believe that swinging easier produces longer shots. The proof is in the pudding, not the putting, the pudding. Anyway, thanks for your excellent videos and stellar example. I hope to join one of your trips soon. I was signed up two years ago for Southern Spain, but sadly that fell through. Thanks, Rex Baird. Well, thank you, Rex, um, from everybody at Easier Swing. What a, a lovely email. Um, and I've just got one more thing to share with you today. I mean, you, you do, you, you're fantastic. The things you share with us, the comments we've been getting, unbelievable. So here we have our own, and this guy is, uh, I think, from the Midlands, not far from where Shakespeare was born. And he has written this, a journey to the easiest swing in golf. Brian's book encouraged me to swing in my own way. Being imperfect at golf was going to be okay. He suggested being free of expectational tension and I'll swing with ease till I get to my pension. Julian showed me the positive six and the negative three, hit the ball with swinging legs and closed eyes. He amazed me. Forget positions he coaxed, it's all about motion. Try it this way and you'll find the magic potion. Ladas truly Ladas duly practiced, I turned, my weight shifted. A relaxed turn forward and hey, the ball lifted. With practice I found coordination and rhythm, no less. With my finish and balance enhanced by souplesse. I now felt more mobile as my left heel lifted. All of a sudden I felt almost gifted. No more stiff arms for me as my elbow bent softly. My head followed the ball and my eyes lifted loftily. And so now I play with my very own easiest swing. I no longer feel tired nor any pain. Now that's quite a thing. At last I can escape from golf's technical jungle. That next positional tip that just leads to more bungle. No miracle. It doesn't stop me hitting the odd shot badly. But for all the good ones, I'll put up with that gladly. So now, thanks guys, I play free of tension and I'll swing with ease while I collect my pension. Uh oh, I didn't think it was going to happen. So, looks like the timing is about right because the wind's getting up and my hat's going to keep coming off. So that's it for today folks. Uh, thanks again for watching. I'm going to do another video in three weeks time. So exactly, uh, that'll be Monday I believe the 29th at 3 p.m. in the afternoon. So thanks again for watching. Please keep your comments coming. You are wonderful. What a pleasure.